please be seated. Thank you to the Adelaide University Medical Orchestra for your lovely music. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Suzanne Tillett. I am a civil celebrant and the master of ceremonies for today's proceedings. I extend a warm welcome to you all to this very special ceremony, the University of Adelaide 2018 Annual Memorial and Dedication Service, and I thank you for your attendance. I would first like to acknowledge the Ghana people, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which the University of Adelaide's campuses at North Terrace, Waite and Roseworthy are built. Today we have a very full, interesting and inclusive program ahead of us. And so to commence proceedings, we will now play a short video that demonstrates the profound impact the body donation program has upon student learning experiences and the direct impact every donation has on saving lives. So I'm uh, Professor PJ Wormald. I head up the Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, which in layman's terms is ENT surgery. We will uh, have four dissections for you this afternoon, starting with uh, Daniel Simmons uh, from uh, Zurich. We have 450 ENT surgeons attending this conference. And now we are close to the... This conference has been streamed from anatomical labs at the university. The surgeons see this as the highlight of the conference, the ability to be able to actually see surgery being performed and techniques being shown which they can take away with them and utilise on their patients. To do that we need to have a realistic model to be able to teach these surgeons these new procedures and that model is absolutely critically uh, based on human donation of the body. So the tendon is that strong, it pulls it off the bone. But, uh, so does that My name is Prajay Patel. I'm from Auckland in New Zealand. Um, I've come here to the University of Adelaide to complete the medicine course. I went around to different parts of the world, saw the need for healthcare there, and um, I remember going to see the doctor with my mum as a kid and just always being fascinated by you know, the level of care that they show all their patients and it's something that I really wanted to aspire to do. We'll be back here next Wednesday to do lower limb, but remember your learning has to be focused on the specimens. You can do anything out of the books, but this is different, this is, this is real life. The first time we do go down into the anatomy lab and we're provided with um, those resources from people who've donated their bodies. It is quite intimidating and there is a sense of apprehension but once you're there and you have the chance to learn from those resources, it's a privilege to be able to do that. You know, when I first came into the labs, I remember looking at these and these are the, re the real thing, the real deal and you know, there's no better way to learn than actually picking it up and seeing where things go, where things attach. I remember looking at my own hand at one point and being like, you know, that's what I look like, that's what it looks like. You know, if you cut, if you cut that open, you know, it's unbelievable. There is a canal there and there's a, there's a, a name, so guys... Guy's Canal. Yeah, Guion's Canal. There hasn't done a question yet. Thank you. Brain and anatomy is very complex and knowing not only the surface anatomy, but the in-depth anatomy and knowing how each part relates to each other is fundamentally important. Hello, good morning, how are you? There's a lot of individual 
variation from one person to another. So the more that we get a chance to work with this tissue and learn from it, the more we gain in our knowledge and more skilled we become. So we have analysed our courses. One of our courses is on managing major arterial haemorrhage. If you injure the carotid artery, a third of the patients will die. A third of the patients will end up with a stroke. A third of the patients will survive intact. We then analysed surgeons who had been through our training course and looked at their outcomes of their patients when they had a carotid injury. And 100% of those patients survived. 100% of those patients had no neurological outcome and all of those patients had a great outcome as a consequence of the training that we were able to give. And when I do that, I will turn and view them. Do you notice that? So for us to be able to teach without the body donation program would be almost impossible. I now invite Professor Alastair Burt, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences, to give the opening address. Distinguished guests, families of the donors, students, other members of the university community, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the three universities in South Australia, the University of Adelaide, Flinders University and the University of South Australia, I'll, I welcome you to this special annual memorial and dedication service, now in its 21st year. In particular, I'd like to welcome the families and friends of those most generous individuals who bequeathed their bodies to medical science, the people we are remembering today. I also welcome some of our students, Many of, which, many of whom are here uh, in their first week of their university studies, uh, together with some third-year dental students. Through their generous donation, your family members, your loved ones, have provided an invaluable opportunity to these young students who are taking the first steps as the next generation of medical researchers and healthcare professionals. The video that you've just viewed reminds us all of the importance of these donations made by your family and friends and provides an insight into the impact it has on health and medical science. I know that some of you have been to this ceremony previously, some uh, over many years, but for others it may be your first time. Please know that you're all welcome here as members of the wider university community. This is a solemn occasion. It reminds us that scientific endeavour is intrinsically linked to the concerns of humanity. It reminds us that the work of our staff and students is crucially dependent on the generosity and support of the wider community. And perhaps most importantly, it reminds us that human dignity is a fundamental principle that is at the core of all of our learning, teaching and research. To the families and friends that are here tonight, we acknowledge that this service may be very difficult for you, but I hope that in some small way, as we salute the memory of your loved ones, it brings you some comfort to know how this tremendous gift is both honoured and valued. Through this gift, we remain forever in your debt. To all the students that are here today, I hope that this service and all that it means will remain with you during your university days and throughout your working life. As new scholars in health and medical sciences, you each carry a special responsibility, which is unlike any other academic discipline. As part of your training, you pledge to be completely transparent in your studies, you pledge to be empathetic, compassionate and respectful, and you pledge to always recognize the rare privileges to serve humanity through your education and your future work. As new students, you're invited to this service because you've now joined an academy that is bound by trust, goodwill, and accountability. 
You're taking the first steps on the path to a career in which you will have an enormous impact on people's lives and be able to change those lives for the better. This will only be possible because of the people we are remembering today at this service, the donors and their extraordinary gift to us. These individuals have shown unparalleled trust in us and in our capacity to make a difference. We must protect and cherish their faith in us always. We dedicate tonight's service to the memory of each and every donor. And as staff and students of the South Australian Universities, we're grateful this evening to have the opportunity to say thank you for that trust and for the opportunities that it gives us. Finally, to all of those whose loved ones have made this gift, I promise you that we will honor, always honor our responsibility to your family. We remember your loved ones with deep gratitude, and we thank you for joining us tonight as we pay tribute to their selfless gift to our academic community. Thank you. Professor Burt, thank you. I would now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Rowan Valentine, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. Thank you. Chancellor, Deputy Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, and most importantly, the family and friends of our donors. It certainly is a great honour to be able to be here today to speak with you on this very special occasion. As a head and neck surgeon, it always amazes me how trusting our patients are when they're confronted with significant life-saving but life-changing surgery. Being a medical professional means that our patients and their families allow us into their lives during this significant hardship and illness, and this is a tremendous privilege. In return, we give dedication and time into the profession, but the real rewards comes from giving back to the community that affords us this great privilege. I'm young in my career, and hence I remember ever more vividly and fondly my first few days of medical school and I remember being in this audience. It was certainly a confronting experience for me being in the anatomical lab for the first time. It was really my first real experience of death, and it made me wonder, who was this person? What did they do? Isn't it interesting that no matter the life the donor led, they all give equally? Teaching human anatomy is a key part of training young health professionals. The body donation program is an absolute essential part of anatomical teaching. At the University of Adelaide, over a thousand students pass through the anatomical lab each week. But the impact of the South Australian body donation program doesn't stop with university students. Let me share with you another phenomenal impact that the body donation program has. Medicine and surgery is constantly innovating and pushing the boundaries to develop better ways in which we can treat our patients and cure diseases. Part of this process is developing better operative techniques that improve the outcomes and reduce the side effects for our patients. Surgery cannot be taught by a standard anatomy text, nor can it be taught by one mentor. The body donation program allows the development and the innovation of surgical procedures that allow these to then be taught to surgeons all around the world. I learned more about this when I was undertaking my fellowship in anatomical sciences at the University of Florida. During this process, I spent an entire year performing dissections and capturing anatomy from a surgeon's perspective. These images have now been able to be published in all forms of medical literature and delivered to countless audience, audiences, including in the video that you saw this evening. 
and this helps to contribute to the safe delivery of accurate and effective surgery for our patients. This experience has led to the University of Adelaide holding the world's leading surgical training course, teaching anatomy and new surgical techniques to hundreds of international surgeons each year. We have also replicated the Florida Laboratory and recently we have opened the 3D Anatomical Dissection Laboratory Fellowship Program for surgeons, accepting our first surgeon from Malaysia last year. This program has allowed us the development of new innovative surgical approaches and techniques, and the body donation program is essential in teaching these life-saving surgical procedures to surgeons all around the world, and as a surgeon I'm extremely grateful for the donations that we receive. Tonight we are all here to honour, celebrate and acknowledge the tremendous contribution of our loved ones and the, what they have done to maintain education and research. This gift of themselves enables surgeons to help thousands and thousands of patients into the future. And with the University of Adelaide's outstanding national and international reputation, this tremendous contribution is very generous and allows this donation to transcend borders. And it truly is a global gift that they have made to humanity and to the future. Thank you. Dr. Valentine, thank you. As part of the student appreciation address, we will be hearing from four students this evening. I invite forward Kelvin Wong, Bachelor of Dental Surgery, the University of Adelaide, to be our first speaker. Good evening, families and friends of the donors, staff and students. I'm Calvin, a third year dental student, and I'm privileged to speak on behalf of our cohort tonight. I would like to provide you with an insight into the anatomy program at the University of Adelaide from the eyes of a dental student. For our first anatomy lab, I tried the best I could, from reading textbooks to using 3D anatomy apps, drawing diagrams and making notes. So as I walked in, Names of various structures related to the session were swelling through my mind. But when I finally entered the lab and looked around the room, the only things I could think about were, what were their lives like? What were their names? What did he or she do for a living? What hardships did they experience? Who did they love? I could see immense diversity in sizes and shapes. And whilst I didn't even know their names, I knew that they all shared at least one thing in common. They were all extremely generous individuals. To donate themselves to the education of people they had never met before, to entrust us with their bodies, is courage and selflessness that we are all forever grateful for. The gift of knowledge is a powerful one. People often say that what you see in the textbooks is not the same as in real life. From the first session to the very last, this could not have been more true. With guidance from our dedicated tutors, we were able to see all the structures in relation to one another, which helped consolidate our knowledge and better equip ourselves for our future as health professionals. For example, one of the, first, one of the most important things that we learn in second year is how to give local anesthetic. The first time practicing on each other was daunting, and it can certainly feel like you're going in blind. Fortunately, in the labs, we were able to see exactly where these nerves were, the structures they entered, and the muscles and tissues that had to be avoided. We also witnessed the sheer amount of anatomical variation in just one room, further emphasizing the differences between textbook anatomy and real life, as well as the importance of tailoring our treatment to the unique needs of each patient. Indeed, we learned a great deal academically. However, I still believe the most valuable lesson was generosity. 
the ability to give so completely without being able to see the outcome. And upon reflection, this has inspired many of us to consider the prospect of becoming a donor in the future. We are here to commemorate your loved ones. However, we are also equally grateful to everyone here tonight, the family and the friends. We acknowledge the sacrifices that have been made by you and the donors to give the greatest gift myself and my class have ever received. I truly hope you can find peace in knowing that your loved ones were treated with the utmost respect and care, and they have made a lasting impact on the next generation of health professionals here in Adelaide. I would like to conclude with this quote that I believe conveys this sentiment more clearly. Nothing in life will call upon us to be more courageous than facing the fact that it ends. But on the other side of heartbreak is wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. I now invite Maya Todd, Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, the University of Adelaide, to come forward. Thank you. To the academic staff, distinguished guests, future healthcare professionals, and families and friends of those who have made such a generous contribution, Thank you for allowing me to speak today and to offer my gratitude and appreciation of the gift your loved ones have given us. My name is Maya Todd and I'm a doctor working at the Flinders Medical Centre, having graduated last year from the University of Adelaide with a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery. I have been working on the general medical ward for the past two months but it was only two weeks ago when I had my first experience of a family expressing the desire to donate their relative's body to science. The patient was elderly and passed away in hospital, surrounded by their family peacefully. They were kind and generous and had wanted to be an organ donor, but they were aged and not a good candidate. And so for a short period, the family was saddened by the prospect of a lost opportunity. Another family member had suggested the body donation program, and after careful consideration, the generous decision was made. I instantly thought of the hours and years that I had spent learning in the anatomy lab, and how instrumental it had been for my education and understanding of medicine. I remember staying up all night to read textbooks, trying to understand exactly where the blood vessels twist around the heart, or the shape and size of the bones in the hand. I had found it so difficult to learn from the books, and honestly, I thought it was impossible, until I spent some time in the anatomy labs, where I learnt in person the ways in which a body works. Suddenly, it was like all of the paper had made sense, and I could finally understand the shape of the organs and where the nerves run down your spine. I remembered the first time I entered the pathology room at the university, and marvelled at the collection of specimens. There I was, standing in a library of knowledge, which, which was explaining and showing perfectly pre preserved samples of cancer, infection, anatomy and disease. I was surrounded by a historical medical practice, steeped in tradition, where we learn from our patients so that we can better understand illness and health. But there was not just the history of medicine present in the room. There were the stories that each individual was telling, stories of heartache and love, of joy and pain, teaching lessons about disease, um, diseases that we treat and hope to understand more about so that our future patients can benefit. As a student, I don't think I really understood or appreciated the incredibly heavy decision that loved ones had to make to allow me to have the learning experience. But as I reflect back on where I am today, in the hospital, discussing these decisions with family and loved ones, I realise that it is such an important 
important impact on so many lives, not just for the families and friends of our donors, but for the students who pass through the walls of the university, where we learn about science and medicine, but most importantly, we learn about the value of life and the stories of hope, strength and kindness, which we can learn from our patients, living and deceased. On behalf of all past and present medical students at the University of Adelaide, thank you for the precious gift you and your loved ones have given us. We are forever grateful. Maya, thank you. I would now like to invite student representative Christy Siatis to come forward, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, University of South Australia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, academic and professional staff, fellow students, ministers of religion, and most importantly, the reason we are here today, the family and friends of the donors. My name is Christy Siardis and I'm studying physiotherapy at the University of South Australia. I feel privileged to have been granted the opportunity to stand here today on behalf of the physiotherapy students and all students at UniSA to personally thank the families and friends of the donors who made their delicate decision to donate their loved ones' bodies to science or to grant them their wishes of donating their body. From an early age, I never wanted anything more than to be a professional working in the healthcare system. A career in another field was never an option in my eyes, and my love for science grew stronger as I grew older. I counted down the days in high school until I could finally commence my studies in university. I commenced university in early 2015, and human anatomy was one of the first subjects I undertook. I always held an interest in the human body and was completely fascinated by its complexity, but I never anticipated to fall in love with the subject and the field like I have. Despite signing up for an 8am laboratory class and preparing myself for a wealth of content to be delivered my way, I was never bothered, as I felt a sense of belonging in the class, like I was truly meant to be there and enrich my learning in this complicated field of science. I not only fell in love with the subject as a student, but now as a volunteer tutor in the anatomy lab, a position which I've cherished for the last year and a half and continue to do so to this day. I thought university would be all about re reading heavy textbooks and trying to understand what was going on, but having the practical element in anatomy classes is something completely different, and it became invaluable in my learning. You can only learn so much with textbooks, explanations and videos in an attempt to try and grasp an understanding of the complex system that we live in. Without the presence of the donated bodies in the laboratory, we would not be able to learn and fully understand the way the body works and the conditions that arise as a result of physiological changes or injury. Having been struck with various conditions affecting my own musculoskeletal and nervous system, I for one never would have understood what was happening inside of me if it were not for the donors. They have not only impacted my studies and future as a healthcare professional, they have affected me personally on a more personal level to aid in my understanding of the conditions I have dealt with myself. To all the families and friends of the donors, I hope that you feel comfort in knowing that their gift has helped thousands of students gain real life experience, many of whom will go on to saving lives and improving the lives of those in need when illness or injury arises. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And our final student representative is Michaela Bogus, Doctor of Medicine, Flinders University.
Good evening. My name is Michaela Borges. I am a current second year student of the Doctor of Medicine program at Flinders University, and it's my utmost pleasure to be here tonight. I'd like to start by paying my respects to those people whose lives we are here to honour tonight, and also to offer my condolences to the family and friends of those lost. I do think it's a wonderful testament to their memory to see so many people here tonight. I am here as a beneficiary of the selfless decision made by those to enter into the body donation program. As a result of this, in my degree, we are privileged to be able to study anatomy in the most comprehensive way possible. It is one of my favourite classes and I find the experience and the knowledge gained from it to be unrivalled by anything else. Sir William Osler, a Canadian-born physician, put it very well when he said, to study the phenomena of disease without books is to sail an uncharted sea, while to study books without patience is not to go to sea at all. This quote resonated with me, as I believe there is no better way to learn than from patients. These days we have all sorts of technology. There are online textbooks, computer applications, models and classes, and these are great, but even my favourite textbook cannot come close to the knowledge that I have gained from seeing anatomy in person. To be able to learn from real people, to see firsthand the complexities and the differences that make up the human body really is so invaluable. I can't tell you how many times I have come across a clinical question that I've been able to solve using the skills that I have gained from the real experience of anatomy. Ultimately, I hope that in the future, I'll be a better doctor because of it. And for this reason, I am absolutely filled with gratitude and appreciation to those donors who have allowed me to learn in this way. I believe it speaks a great deal to their character, how selfless it is that their last act was concerned with enhancing the learning of others. The generosity that they must have held in their hearts as they gave students like me a gift that we can never really repay them for. I hope that I can honour the memory of those that I have learnt from by continuing to make the most of every learning opportunity that I am given by being generous to those around me, and by continuing to strive towards my ultimate goal as a physician, to help others. Thank you. Michaela, thank you. In acknowledgement of the fact that we all have different beliefs and religion and how important it is to hold on to them, especially if they bring some measure of comfort and support, I would now like to introduce our three religious figures. Pastor Peter Miller, the University of Adelaide Chaplain. Rabbi Shoshana Kaminsky, Beit Shalom Synagogue and Mr. Dilip Chumuli, Hindu chaplain. Thank you. Chancellor, Deputy Chancellor, academic staff, distinguished guests, families and loved ones of those who've donated their bodies for science and students. We've just been privileged to hear the eloquent testimonies of students of anatomy and medical science. And what they've shared with us is not only their deep interest in the study of medicine and in science and in particular anatomy, which is of the marvellous creation of the human person, but also their gratitude for the privilege of being students of that particular field of science through which research and clinical practice deals directly with the human person. All of us, but in particular, you who are the families and the loved ones of those donors, must be particularly personally heartened by the human warmth and expression by these young people through their deeply personal engagement with the deceased person with whom they have pursued their learning. 
and their expressions of genuine gratitude for these people who have made such a significant contribution to their learning. Now students, I invite you to contemplate with me what it is that motivates people to bequeath their bodies to science. In the first place, they are people of imagination, people who imagine a better world than the one in which they are presently living. Of imagination, none other than that genius of the physical sciences and a Nobel Prize winning Albert Einstein of E equals MC squared fame, who was the developer of the theory of relativity and who discovered the law of the photoelectric effect says, imagination is more important than knowledge for knowledge is limited. Whereas imagination embraces the whole world stimulating progress. It is strictly speaking a real factor in scientific research. But now, not only do those who gift themselves to science imagine a better world, they are also imbued with an altruism that seeks to contribute personally to such achievement. Even though they of course know they will not benefit personally. They are people who believe that through the likes of you people, it is achievable. They confidently invest and entrust themselves to you as people who likewise imagine a better world and who are stimulated with the same altruism and sense of genuine human kindness. It is surely true that is this intangible, unquantifiable, indefinable spirit of imagination and altruism which defines us as human beings, body, mind, and spirit. It transcends our physical being. It is, if you like, that something other. Einstein refers to it as the mysterious, of which he says the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and true science. Whoever does not know it can no longer wonder, no longer marvel, and his eyes are dimmed. To quote another Nobel Prize winning physicist, Max Planck, who was the originator of the quantum theory, it is not such a mystery as it is for Einstein. He expresses it this way, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature. This is because in the last analysis, we ourselves are a part of that mystery that we are trying to solve. So there seems to be a little bit of an area there where it's not simply just scientific logic or that which enables us to be outside of being subjective. So as we express ourselves and reflect on these expressions of human warmth and deeply personal engagement of which our speakers, the students and graduates have spoken tonight, yes, doing so with the deceased person with whom our students have engaged in their scientific learning, may we also take the opportunity to reflect on that powerful something other. That something other that motivates us in not simply pursuing science for science's sake. Whilst for Einstein, this something other was mysterious, for Planck, it was something more explicitly stated, something which was more explicitly religious. And I quote again, there can never be any real opposition between religion and science, for the one is the complement of the other. The religious element in man's nature must be recognised and cultivated if all the powers of the human soul are to act together in perfect balance and harmony. 
For people like me, as you would understand, it is the experience of a personal, loving, creating God who has revealed himself to humanity through the mystery of the infinite God-man, Jesus Christ. A God inviting us to join him in sustaining and nurturing his creation through application of intellect and ingenuity and genuine love for humankind, who proclaimed, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. So be it for you the mysterious or the spiritual or simply that unexplainable whatever, I encourage you aspiring professionals in the field of human health and well-being to have an appreciation of the complementary nature of science and that something other. Personally, in addition to having the privilege of being a chaplain here at the University of Adelaide, I'm also privileged to be a chaplain at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. And so I mix with people from all walks of life, of all faiths and all religions, and yes, I spend my time all too often with families, with loved ones, all too young, who need to be removed from life support. People want people around them, people of compassion and understanding. So I experience in that hospital the warmth and professionalism and the human compassion of the medical people with whom I collaborate. And it is a collaborative culture, and that is something for which we chaplains feel especially privileged. So I take it to be an acknowledgement by the medical profession of their value of spiritual care of the whole person. And the testimonies of our students today give me every reason to be confident that such collaborative complementary practice will continue in the future across all health and well-being professions and institutions, out of love simply for humankind, motivated by a spirit of altruism, compassion, and inspired through the imagining of a better world. Namaste, donor, dear donor families and friends, students and staff. I feel privileged to be given this opportunity yet again to say a few words at this annual dedication ceremony as a representative of the Hindu community of Adelaide. Religious, spiritual and social practices of Hindus are based on three types of lit scriptures, Shruti, Smruti, and Puran. The latter are narratives of the past, the oldest of which was composed over 2,500 years ago. Hindus are brought up on Puranic stories of individuals of the past, which provide an insight into common human behavior. We learn from them, those, from those characters portrayed in them what is good and what is bad behavior. From these stories we learned the axiom paropakaraya punyaya, meaning if you want punya or merit, then carry out benevolent deeds. Hindu scripture says that to build up a better karma or cumulative consequences of one's deeds, and thus to achieve a more favorable future rebirth, one must carry out virtuous or meritorious deeds, thus accumulating punya. Paropkar is a benevolent selfless action of assisting others without expecting anything in return that is wholly devoted to the service of others. Hindus believe that the Lord keeps a balance for each person in which we receive from others and the world is on the debit side and what we give to the others and to the world on the credit side. At the final departure from this world, there should be a positive balance against our name if we want a better future birth. 
Since none of us know when is our departure time or departure date, it is prudent to help others and behave ethically and morally all the time. The persons who suggested that after death their bodies to be given to the universities for teaching and research were mindful that they should contribute to, the, uh, to positive uh, balance by being a part of the process to leave this world disease-free, thus making it a better place than at the time of their entrance in the world. Their act thus falls under nishkam karma, that is selfless action. To me, they have a positive balance against their name. I and others are grateful that they decided to give their bodies to assist in teaching and research. We are all better for it. I humbly bow to them. I'll, con I'll conclude with a prayer for the departed, requesting Lord Vishnu of the Hindu Trinity to provide peace for their souls. Anadi nidhanam deva shankha chakra gadadhara akshaya pundari kaksha preta shantim pralobhava. He devadhi dev, iman pretan shantim tatha moksham pradadat bhavan iti vayam prarthayamaha. I'll now say millennia old prayer for all of us. Om Sarvetra Sukhinas Santu, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makashchit Dukham Apniyat. May everyone be happy and healthy. May all see what is auspicious and no one may suffer ever. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let there be peace always. We Jews have a special tradition in speaking of those who have died. We say, Zichronam Livracha, may their memory be a blessing. It is a prayer, but also a statement of fact. When those we love pass from this world, most of what is left behind are the precious memories of all that they have meant to us. Those memories are indeed a blessing for us. They give us strength and encouragement when we are feeling weak. They make us smile when we are feeling discouraged. And they do make us sad when we mark moments in our own lives that we wish they could share. The realm of memory can be a double-edged sword. In the early days of loss, we may experience our memories almost as a physical blow but how terribly bereft we would be without those precious recollections. We know that our loved ones will always be real so long as we tell their stories, pass on their wisdom, and so long as we hold on to our memories. We take a quiet moment now to sit with the memories of those we have lost, to celebrate who they were, and to give thanks that they were a part of our lives. I now offer the Jewish prayer of commendation as we entrust these souls to their eternal rest. Merciful God, who dwells on high and in our hearts, grant perfect peace to the souls of our dearly beloved who have gone to their eternal rest. Shelter them in your divine presence among the holy and pure, whose radiance is like the brightness of the firmament. May their memory inspire us to live justly and kindly. May their souls be at peace, and may they be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Miller, Rabbi Kaminsky, Mr. Chumuli. Thank you. Very soon, our ceremony will be drawn to a formal close with the academic procession, followed by the opportunity for donor family members to place a floral tribute in front of the remembrance plaque. I would like to thank the families of those who have gone before us and the students who continue this vital and much needed research to aid us all. Thank you for your attendance and I extend a very warm welcome to you all to stay for refreshments which will be served on the Goodman Crescent lawns. In closing this special time of dedication and remembrance I have chosen these lovely words by an unknown author to leave with you this evening. There is a place that we call memory, a province which, though unseen, is home and haven to the heart. And there, in peace and beauty waiting, are those with whom we shared our yesterdays. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you now to please be upstanding, if you are able, for the academic procession. Thank you. I ask for you to please remain standing as we now invite the families of the donors to come forward row by row and then exiting via the central aisle to the eastern doors following the direction of university staff. Thank you.